بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد. I try to go through them as quick as I can. Um, please explain why Peter, the disciple of Jesus, was shown that all foods are clean. Okay, um, Peter did mention that. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, if Peter understood that all foods are clean and you don't have to follow the old law anymore, then how did Peter, five chapters later, agree that you have to stay away from the four things? The four things which I mentioned in Acts of the Apostles, the blood, the meat of the strangled animals, food offered to idols from, and from sexual immorality. Immorality. So how could Peter already have concluded that the blood is clean if he would later on say that blood was unclean? This incident that Peter was shown all foods are clean, if Peter had really made this conclusion, he could, he could not have sat in the council and decided something contrary to that and have the Holy Spirit also agree with him and Paul also. So you see there's a confusion there. The only resolution to that confusion is to understand that Paul taught one thing and Jesus and his disciples taught the other thing. Um, I read a commentary on the Quran, uh, Ibn Kathir, it mentions six, uh, Quran chapter 36 verse 14 that Paul was considered one of the messengers. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, this is... Uh, so right. seen. Yeah, that's the so one. Seen. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll answer that one. That's, uh, okay, this is chapter 36 verse 14. Okay, where he says, when we first sent to them two apostles, they rejected them. This is in the Quran, this is the interpretation of the meaning. But we strengthened them with a third. They said, truly we have been sent on a mission to you. Now, uh, now Christian missionaries say that Ibn Qasib says in his tafsir, his commentary, exegesis, of the Quran, that this verse refers to Paul of Ta. And, and thus Paul, Paul Ross, uh, in, 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 in the Arabic uh, term, is one of the messengers of God according to Islam. Now let's see whether Ibn Kathir makes such a claim. Let's see. Ibn Kathir writes, The names of the first two messengers were Shamun and Yohanna, and the name of the third was Bul, Bulos, and the city was Antioch. But the question is, is this Ibn Kathir's view? Yes. No. Wait. This saying is attributed to Shu'aib al Jabay. Al Jabay. Ibn Kathir is quoting Shu'aib al Jabay. Ibn Kathir has also quoted interpretations of different people as well. He says that according to Ibn Ishaq, the names of these three are Sad Sadiq, Saduq, Shalom. No Bulas mentioned here. Al Qurtubi, no mention of Paul or Bulas. Tafsir Ibn Abbas, no mention of Paul. And the word Mursalun does not mean messenger, it means sent. There's a difference between Rasul and Mursal. <coughs> Mursal means sent one. And there are verses in the Quran where God talks about people were sent to the people of Lut. And it uses the same word. Mursal, Mursalun. It doesn't use Rasul. So there's a difference there. So that's not it. And to to top off the argument, we have a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira. Remember, the authority of the Prophet is the most high. Not most high, is the higher authority, I mean. The higher authority over the disciples, the companions, over the scholars. His authority, his say, is higher than theirs. Look what he says. Narrated Abu Huraira, which is a companion of the Prophet. I heard the Apostle saying, I am the nearest of all the people of the son of Mary, and all the prophets are paternal brothers, and there has been no prophet between me and him. Referring to Jesus. This is found in Bukhari, volume 4, book 55. Doesn't Paul say that they disciples gave me their right hand of fellowship? I answered that already. Um, okay, on salvation, there's a... There's a, there's a um, okay, our concept of salvation... It's very simple. Whoever dies, knowing <coughs> La ilaha illallah will enter paradise, will be saved. In other words, if you die, knowing that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, the one true God, he will be saved. To, to, to truly be saved is not to associate partners with God. This is salvation according to the Islamic perspective. Salvation according to the Christian perspective is to believe Jesus died for your sins. Fair enough. That's your view. But our view is, you want salvation? Die 
in believing in the unique oneness of God, worshipping Him alone, you're living, you're sacrificed, you're dying, everything is for God, because we have a verse in the Quran that God says that uh, that God Almighty will not forgive anyone who dies worshipping others besides God, but who will forgive any other sin besides that. Adultery, fornication, murder, if you sin sin and you repent from that, we, we believe God will forgive. But to, to die associating partners with God, like our Christian friends do with all due respect, Jesus, the Son of God, um, son of, this is shirk according to the Islamic perspective. There's no paradise for that person if he dies in that state. Now, if he repents before his death, says, I don't, I don't associate partners, I believe in the unique oneness of God, I only worship you, O God, I don't, I don't make you into a trinity or so on and so forth, and you die in that state, then and, and the only way to do that is to accept Islam. Because only in the religion of Islam, you'll be free from shirk, from associating partners with God. That's the, the only religion today is Islam, which is free from shirk. Associating partners with God and to be saved, you must accept the religion of Islam. Um, this is our salvation, inshallah. It's the die on Tawheed. This is the most important thing. And this was understood by the prophets. And this was understood by the messengers. As I said before, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاشْتَنُ الْضَاهُ That we have sent to all nations, from Adam to the last prophet, Adam, Abraham, uh, David, Solomon, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, Isaac, Ishmael, all the prophets. We have sent them to tell their people to go to their nation and say, worship God alone and to shun false deities. Anything that's false, the statues, the stones, the wood, the tree, the sun, the moon, is all false. And sons and daughters of God, this is not, um, this was never taught by the prophets of God. This is true salvation. Okay, you argue that Jesus kept the Old Testament law as... But then again, um, this, he's saying that how does this fit with his action in Mark chapter 7 verse 19? This is the problem. There's, there's one saying of Jesus in Matthew chapter... chapter. I don't know how you're going to get out of that verse. In, in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 19 to I think 22... Where he says, if you break one of the least commandments, what's he talking about? The Old Testament. You're considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. Paul didn't come. Paul, Paul abolished the whole law. He didn't just break a small commandment. He didn't break a small law or circumcision. It wasn't just it. the whole law he broke. Therefore, if you have had a choice between Jesus and Paul, I'll follow Jesus. Because you have, he has a higher authority than Paul. The prophets have higher authority than um, people after them, who comes after them and who claim, you know, even high authority than the disciples. So, and then also there's a verse he says, oh good, a scribe comes up to him, oh good master, what must I do to have eternal life? He says, why call me good? There's none good but one, that is God. And if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Didn't you say that? Follow the commandments, simple. So, Jesus said that, now you're quoting me Mark 7, chapter 19. What's the point of going to Mark chapter 7, verse 19, when I can give you verses which says contrary to that? The problem is, there's obviously there's some, there's some, some problem here in the Bible. There's, there's different sayings. There could be contradictions. I believe, I believe they are contradictions. I believe there are words of Jesus still intact. That is authentic in there. I do believe. And I judge Jesus according to the Islamic perspective. If, 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 if he... If, because there are a lot of things attributed to Jesus. But like I said, there's no chain of narration which proves that... What Jesus said, that there is a sanat, there's a chain of narration from him to his disciples that is authentic. We have that system in Islam, this hadith methodology, the Christians don't have that system. So, Jesus might say things, but how do I know it wasn't attributed to him, or was it truly what he said? How do I know he really said it? Can you give me proof that it was said from this person to that person, and he went all the way back to Jesus? Where's the sanat? Where's the, where's the chain of narration? That he authentically <coughs> don't have that system. We do, and we have Alim and Rijal. We have scholars who don't only they study the chain, and they also study the, the the character of the individual who's transmitting it. Is he a liar? Is he trustworthy? Is he known to be? Uh, uh, is, has he got a bad memory? We have <laughs> scholars who have um, 
that's a that's a science. Uh, that's another science in in, in, in hadith method.